Chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be safe. Sounds like he is repeating what he did in chapter 9. Correct? I want to give myself up. Yeah. For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. No kidding. You know, Paul himself, he was zeal, had zeal for God, but the zeal for God that he had was according to the knowledge of the law and not the knowledge of God and the scriptures. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. And then he established this principle. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Notice that he didn't say it's the end of the law, period. But for righteousness. Righteousness is not attained through the law. But it's not the end of the law. Um, you still are responsible to the law for everyone who believes. And then um, he says we need to to present the gospel because in in chapters in verses five to seven they keep they keep still waiting for the Messiah. It says what is the one? who will come from above or come below, and they didn't realize that Jesus already had come. That's what it means in those uh, two verses. Verse, uh, then verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. And how did you get that? When you present the word of God, it says, and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be safe. So we go back with the principle that we believe with the heart. And then he indicated that there is no distinction. This faith in verse 12 is, uh, is in... Um, uh, is for everyone, the Jew and the Greek. In Isaiah 28:16 uh, says in verse 11, "Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame." Remember that. So Isaiah is demonstrating that salvation is in Christ alone, in the Messiah. And look at this, um, verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah also says, Lord who has believed our report. And he's, the answer is 1017. So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Look at that that use of words. I will say, if, if I was going to write this, so then faith comes by hearing, and it will be by the hearing of the word of God. But that's not what he says. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing you actually hear with your heart. And the one that makes you, your heart hear is the Word of God. That's, that's basically, he's saying, goes directly. And then, grace. it's grace, pure grace. And then they say, did thou hear? And then it says, yes, they hear, but again, they don't believe because it is by pure mercy and by election. And now, uh, Pastor uh, Walter already gave us chapter 11, so we go directly into chapter 12. And chapter 12 is the conclusion, really, 
of all the plans of salvation, what do you do with it? With the plan of salvation. And the plan of salvation says, now you have to do something with it. And if you cannot change, if your life has not changed, then you really can not say that you believe. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Again, repeats what chapter 6 says, you know, what you used to do, don't do it anymore. And do not be conformed to this world. If Christians don't look too different from the world, then we might not be transformed. If Christians, if people, do, if the world is not angry at you, maybe you are not showing the gospel to them. Maybe you are not changing them. But, the trans, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the title of renewing your name, mind by R.C. Sproul. Remember? That you may prove that it, what is good and acceptable and perfect will, will of God. So, it's not a leap of faith. It's that you fully understand <coughs> the plan of salvation and then you are going to renew your, na your mind because faith, even though you cannot get it through reason, faith is not reasonable. It's difficult to understand what you say, but it is not unreasonable. But it's not just a leap of faith. And then he continues to say, change, change, change. For as we have many members, uh, he says, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought. In fact, other translation says, think of you, think of everyone else better than you think of you. So that is an attitude of humbleness, humility. Uh, <clears throat> think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And then he says, in the church, there are going to be many members. And each person will have particular gifts. Everyone does not have the same gifts. Some say that, that every member should have the gifts of tongues and that you are proof that you are a Christian if you are speaking in other tongues. That is not true. You are not saved by speaking in other tongues because there are many gifts as there are many people. And that's why we need each other. For as we had many members in the body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ. And uh, really what he's telling us is we need to love each other. We need, desperately need each other. I cannot make a sloppy joes. We need somebody to make them. Yeah. <laughs> Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And then it says, in prophesy, <clears throat> let us prophesy <clears throat> in proportion to our faith. So we have to be careful with this. Prophesy is not to tell, it says, I have to tell you this, the Holy Spirit told me this about you. And I'm going to prophesy what God told me. God told me. Nonsense. Run away from those people like from the devil himself. Because this prophecy that, G, that, that Paul is talking about is the presentation of the gospel. That's the prophecy that we are involved in. We are going to say what the Bible says. Um, uh, 
in proportion to our faith or ministry. You see, it's about what we learn. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. Not everyone has that gift. There are people who think they have the gift of exhortation and they come and insult people and walk away. Now that's not exhortation. It's, uh, teachers. Oh, wow. I am terribly afraid of teaching because, you know, if you have that gift, and I think God has given me the gift of teaching. That, uh, that I know I was a teacher, then I was uh, 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 a supervisor of teachers, and because they knew that I, God has given me that gift. But on the other hand, in the letter of Jude, it says, you teachers, make sure that you are faithful. Because the condemnation is worst. You know, it's worse if you teach what is wrong, what is not the oracles of God. If you are doing your own thing or you want to do. Uh, yeah. Um, he who gives with liber liberality, you know, they actually, I was reading here in the book that R.C. Sproul wrote about Romans. He says, be cautious also with the way you give. Don't give to everyone. Every, I know a lady in Pennsylvania who gives to everyone who asks, including Benny Hinn and R.C. Sproul. <laughs> he says, no, you have, you have to understand what is that ministry. What are they doing with your money? It's, you have to be very careful. There are people who say, oh, I have three children in Africa. And they, they have this adoption and things like that. And they are discovering that many of these monies really don't get to the children. I know a case in South America where the family receives Twenty-five dollars, and they, they drink it. They <laughs> and they say, and they show the picture of the kid and send it. The early fathers, they have something written, say, take your gift that you're going to give with liberty, liberality, but make it sweat a little bit in your hand <laughs> to. You, to make sure that you don't give to false teachers, and especially to the prosperity gospel. And this, this verse is used by prosperity gospel people to make you give more. Uh, he who leads with diligence, you know, don't be lazy. Uh, and, and, some people call, I always said to R.C., where did you get your energy? You know, he, was, he was running so many things. He was preaching and teaching and running programs. He was diligent. He knew that the time was short. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness, happy to be able to use. Let love without hypocrisy. Ah. Oh. It is something that all of us will have to think about it. What we say, let our heart and our mind agree with our words. You see, it is, it is terrible when you say to a brother, I love you, and inside you are trying to take advantage of that person. Abhor. Look at those words that they use. Abhor what is evil. This, these are strong words. You know, hate evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. No lacking, lacking intelligence. Fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. What a, what a, 
uh, a contrast with chapter 1, verse 18 on. All the sins that are there, and my helper is here. Yeah. <laughs> Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. All this, these are things, you know, it's practical things. Yeah. He didn't stay out there in, in the theology, but he says, come down to earth. Is that you? And when I read this, I keep asking myself, is that me? When I say continue steadfast in prayer, I usually tell people, spend time in prayer as much as you can. And it's difficult, but one of the good ways that uh, many have discovered is to always go, go to the same place, in the same chair, with the same good cup of Colombian coffee, you know, have coffee with Jesus, cafecito con Jesus. <clears throat> and, but the moment you sit in that place or kneel in that place, you already know that you are in the presence of the Holy God. And dear ones, it's like everything. We establish certain habits and we, it is easier to go there. Uh, to read the Bible, not only to talk to God, but let God talk to you. It will take 10, 15 minutes to read the Bible. And they told me, um, um, what was his name? Rizzo said, if you read, imagine this. You listen to this and uh, you are a witness. And you are a witness since you were there. He said that you can read the entire book of Ephesians in half an hour. Imagine that. In half an hour. How much do you retain? How much do you learn? Sometimes you see the overview. And then you sit 15 minutes every day with the book of Ephesians. And you are going to retain a lot because eventually that's what happened to Paul here. You end up in doxology and giving glory to God. Say, oh, the glory of God, the glory of Christ. Um, not like an intelligence of the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient, individual, continuing steadfast in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Wow. Bless and do not curse. Remember the lady that is that hates his brother so much? She prays for him every day. And any time that she feels that hatred, natural thing, and says she's doing, he's doing wrong to my mom, she goes to the, to the hospital. And the doctors and the nurses and all these people in the hospitals who are making so much money, they said, your mom is doing better. And what did she say? Look at me in the face. Is she? <laughs> she cannot even. Yeah. She's doing better. Bless those who persecute. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Jesus, last night at Lazarus' tomb, what did he do? He wept. He wept. The shortest weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind to one another. So beautiful. When I deal with uh, uh, Judy and with Brenda and with people who help in this ministry, and you know, there are four here, five of us who work in the ministry. We are of the same mind. Yeah? And, and Anna is able to tell me, don't do that. You know, we have to tell them very often. Not that often, but <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, we, because I don't know anything about keeping books and finances. Yeah. She is the finance person. Yeah. They have one track mind, looking for that penny. <laughs> <laughs> but we are of the same mind. Yeah, and when we meet, even with difficulties and tired as we are, we are of the same mind, and we are, yeah. Um, be of the same mind to one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Uh, I encourage you, whenever you see a poor people in the church, go to them. 
Say, how are you? Are you doing okay? You know, uh, this is my... Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Uh, I, I have to quote R.C. Sproul. Anytime you want to judge someone, please give him the judgment of mercy. Always find an excuse for their faults. Given, it must be a reason. Person is tired, is hungry, is something. Look, the, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. We have to give a good testimony so we don't blaspheme the name of God. Remember the, the verse that I gave you? Romans 2, 24. Because people blaspheme the name of God because of us. Take the name of God on us, call ourselves Christians, and act like the devil. And they say, you see, that's that God. Yeah. If it is possible, ah, oh, oh, what a beautiful thing here, right? If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Brenda, man of the mountain. <laughs> Beloved, beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. You know, any time somebody attacks you, remember that those attacks are going by you, over you, directly to the cross. They are not attacking you. Uh, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in, in so doing, you will heap coals fires on his head. What does that translate? That, trans, that actually... Does that make them crazy? Mm, they don't understand why you're doing this? They don't understand. Yeah. All these kind of things. He said, wow. Wow. You know, I, I don't know if you ever read a, a book by uh, How to Make Friends and Influence People. Uh, what was his name? No, Ganniger? Uh, or something like that. I don't remember his name. Uh, Dale Gar Gardiger. Carnegie, no, Dale right. Carnegie, yeah, yeah. Carnegie, <laughs> Dale Carnegie. He says, <clears throat> if always, always look for an excuse for others. And if you are at odds with someone, go and ask them for a favor. <laughs> they will never understand that. Say, wow. A favor that they can do. Something simple. Well, do you mind if you could help me with this? <laughs> yeah. And then, the, it, it, you know, they, they say, what is happening here? And eventually, but there is another explanation for that. Uh, I read it, but I don't remember. I'll, I'll find out. Do not do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do anyone does something to you? Try, find a way. We, we have to find a way to respond with good. And this works for the people who are involved in the ministry. This work in the ministry. I have to tell you, there are a lot of ministries that compete with each other and are envious of each other. It's an amazing thing. The, the ministry of SRL in Latin America, eventually other ministries came in and for some reason or another they thought that they have to fight each other or they have to find faults with each other or whatever, to the point that the Armenians, they said, if these reformers, <laughs> so a year ago, 
we had a convention in Bogota. And guess what we did? We invited every head of every ministry. They could not understand because it was a big convention. And not only that, but uh, we invited some of the representatives to be keynote speakers. And you should see, we still have the videos. You have the video when I am surrounded by people who had concerns about SRL ministry. But when they saw that we don't care, it's not about us. It's about, Christ. It's about yeah, it's about giving the gospel to everyone. So as much as it depends of you, be at peace with everyone. Isn't it? It's a difficult thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. But it, it, it's not about them. And giving uh, people excuses, that's hard to do. I mean, our, it seems like our whole culture has is, is come about to the point where we're always making excuses for people. We're giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But that doesn't strike me as, as, as a positive in the end, because people need to take responsibility. Oh, yeah. They need to be held accountable for their actions. Oh, yes. We're constantly giving them excuses for their behavior. They never take responsibility. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that's not what I meant. Okay. That's not what I meant. Uh, he, he, you are... Re <laughs> Paul says, those who do not work, they should not eat. Those who do not work should not eat. Yeah. And the Lord Jesus basically says all of the responsibility is in your mind. There are people who leave the church because a friend of them didn't say hello to them that day. Yeah. You know? or, or, or they look at with, with a wrong eye or thing like that. Or the pastor doesn't say hello for three or four uh, Sundays. Or, you know, things like that. So that type of Always yeah. give the benefit. They say, they must have a reason. It's nothing wrong, you know, because, I have to tell you this. God condemns idolatry. Idolatry. And there is an idol that is a horrible idol. We. Mine. I like to be worshipped by everyone. We are looking for people to worship us. We are going to look for people who say nice things about us. Like you, respect people you. respect you, like me, and things like that. And the moment they, they don't do it, yeah. we claim our rights to be respected, to be loved, to be, how dare you to say that about me? It's all about us. We are looking for people to worship us. And that is basically what we are not going to get. Okay. Uh, and then chapter 13, we're almost done. Chapter 13, uh, you already know that is the responsibility towards the government. And this is not a very good chapter to preach right before income tax preparation. <laughs> okay, 14 is the, that we have to respect the others, but I am going to repeat what Bob Parsons says last Sunday. We cannot allow the wicked brother to, to become a tyrant. Exactly. And you know, I, the wicked brother always pointing the finger. You are drinking too much, you are doing this, you are, you are doing that, and that's against the Bible, and, and, and you are wearing makeup, and you know, in my church we don't do that, and you are not wearing a skirt, and you are wearing pants, and that is against the Bible, and at one point you have to say to the wicked brother, grow up, <laughs> and don't let it rule the Christian liberty, but at the same time, if a person is offended because I eat meat that is given to idols or something like that, then I don't in front of them. 
I wait. Out of respect. If, I, if a person is offended because I drink a glass of wine, then I don't in front of them. You know? Uh, Eric Alexander is a preacher from um, Scotland, came to 10th Presbyterian Church for the Philadelphia Conference on Reformed Theology. And he says, I had been highly criticized because I am forced to use the American Standard Bible and there is nothing standard in America. <laughs> and then he says, but I can also say to you that Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, drink a little bit of wine for your stomach when you are sick. And I just came back from lunch and saw many, many sick pastors. <laughs> Not a little bad, but they very, very sick in their stomach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was, um, then chapter 15 continues with the same thing. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and, and not to please ourselves. You know, uh, and let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. For every Christian did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell upon me, that's upon Jesus. Um, the, there were Problems at that time where Gentiles and Jewish people do not get together because that was a forbidden thing. So Jewish people will hide to meet with the Gentiles and as soon as they will see another Jew coming, they will separate so they will not cause a scandal to them. And at one point, as you say, you don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Paul came and said to, to Peter, you hypocrite. <laughs> Remember that? When you are with the Gentiles and when you see the Jewish people, you separate from them and you don't sit with them and you don't eat with them. See? And the reason why was because he was letting him take advantage of the liberties, of the non-liberties, the scruples of the tradition of the Jewish people. And then uh, chapter 16, as I say, ends with the, um, with the greetings to everyone, with the recommendations to be faithful, and um, uh, the, he actually commends people to each other, take care of each other, love each other. That's the reference to all of the, yeah. the names. And all the reference of the name. And then... Uh, this letter was written by Tertius. I like this, avoid divisive persons. Ah, divisive persons. Actually, there are people who are excommunicated from churches because they go around causing division to everyone. You need to get away from those people. Yeah. Uh, um, 22, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. That means that Paul wrote it, Tertius. but, um, I mean, Paul dictated Tertius, and Tertius wrote it. But there are other places, like Galatians, where Paul says, I myself wrote it, and look how big I'm writing. So you realize that it is me, and so on. And then he finished, and we're going to finish with this, 24. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It begins with grace, ends up with grace. Now, to him, look at the way he finished writing. Again, he goes back to doxology, to giving glory to God. Now, to whom? To him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. 
My gospel is not the gospel of Paul. It's the gospel that he is preaching. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. See, the prophets in the Old Testament, they themselves, many of them, did not understand what they were writing and for whom. But now it has been revealed. But now may manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to, to the faith. To God alone, alone wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. We just finished the Carta Magna the, of the Bible, the greatest epistle that will explain the gospel. So to God alone be the glory. Amen.